Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the James Webb Telescope. They successfully unfolded the primary mirror today. That was a big accomplishment because that was the first time a space telescope has been deployed with a folding mirror. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about the L2 point. That's the point where this telescope is going to be placed. And I've seen explanations of this L2 orbit, but I think they all get a little too complicated. So I'm going to try and give a, a very simplified model and explanation of what an L2 orbit is. As of today, the James Webb Telescope is about 600,000 miles from Earth, and it's about halfway to its destination, this L2 point. It's called a Lagrange point. So imagine, if you will, that this is the Sun and this is the Earth, not to scale by any means, and the Earth orbits the Sun like this. The string represents the gravitational pull of the Sun on the Earth, and so the Earth stays in orbit because the centrifugal force, an imaginary force, let's talk a little bit about centrifugal force. They call it an imaginary force because it only exists in a rotating frame of reference. But let's just talk about centrifugal force as if it exists. So when the attraction for the sun to the earth is exactly equal to the centrifugal force, we call that orbit. So there exists a point beyond the earth in its orbit around the sun called a Lagrange point. And I'm only gonna talk about L2. There are five of these Lagrange points, but this one is pretty easy to picture if you imagine that this is the James Webb Telescope, and here's where they're going to place it, right out here beyond Earth's orbit around the sun. We're gonna ignore the moon. The moon is not pictured in this model here. But there's the James Webb Telescope, this little paper clip, and it's going to orbit on the other side of the Earth and follow it around. And so it's the combined forces, it's the combined gravitational forces of the Earth and sun that counterbalance the centrifugal force and objects can remain fairly stable in that orbit. Now there's one more aspect to the motion. So as it goes around the Sun, it's doing this so that it is never in the shade of the Earth and it can always be getting power from the Sun and its temperature will, will remain stable. It doesn't want to go into the shadow of the Earth because that would cause temperature instability. So again, the final motion of the three bodies in space is somewhat like this, with the telescope also going in this sort of a motion around the sun. So the Earth and the telescope both take a year to go around the sun and the telescope is always facing out away from the Earth and Sun, avoiding any heat and light from both of those bodies. There you go, there's a simple explanation for L2 orbit. And by the way, there are already several objects parked out there in L2, and so right now it's not very crowded, but at some point it's such a handy point in space I imagine it will start to get crowded. The telescope is due to arrive at L2 sometime towards the end of January. It's about a 30-day trip from Earth and it took off on Christmas Eve, I believe. They lifted off. So it should be there somewhere around January 24th. And then once it arrives there, it'll be probably another five or six months as they let the temperature stabilize before it'll actually start capturing images. So I'm really looking forward to that sometime this summer. Thanks for joining me please like and subscribe to my channel. Cheers.